Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial and playthrough for Traintopia. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to play the game as we go through the first round, and if you'd like to watch the rest of the game, you can do so by clicking the link to the extended playthrough that is down below in the description, or you can click the I up there in the top corner. Now before we move on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. That way, if I make any mistakes while we are playing, I can then put corrections on the screen and you should be able to see them. Now uh, I will be starting the playthrough off with an overview of how the game works, but before we go into that, that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Also, if you would like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a variety of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a couple of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, the game is fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, I do want to mention that the game does not come with these colored cubes. I'm simply using them to better differentiate between each player's turn during this playthrough. Now, let's start things off with a brief overview of how Traintopia works. Now, what we are going to do is go through nine total rounds in a three-player game, and in each round, we are going to flip over one of these cards. For instance, you can see this card right here, and that is going to tell us what different things players can draft in that round. For instance, in a three-player game, this would deal out seven of these tiles, and it would also put a train and two commuters from this bag down onto the card. Then, in turn order, we are each going to take a single thing, which could be any of these things on the card or one of the face-up tiles, and we will then add those into our areas. Now, what we are trying to do in this game is grow our train networks and also get the most points that we can, and we get that through a bunch of different ways. Now, one way involves trying to put these commuters down onto track lines that have different districts. Another one involves putting these tourists down onto track lines that are adjacent to various attractions. Now, we are going to get points for doing those things as we start growing out, and once we finish the game, we will also get end game points for things like having the longest single track and for having lots of different tracks that are enclosed with a station on each end. Now, I will go through the details of all of that once we get there, so I think at this point it's now time to start playing the game. Now, we are going to be playing as the red player over here, and we are going to be the start player, and we know that because we dealt out all of these player aids, and only one of them has a conductor on it. So we got that one, which means we can now take the first turn of the game, although before we can do anything, we have to do preparation. Now, the way that works is we draw the top card right over here, and then we put these different tokens down on top of it. In addition to that, in a three-player game, we are going to draw three tiles out from the top of this stack. So we can start populating this round card, and we are going to take one of these white tokens, which is a tourist, and put it there. We can put a train down here, and then there is a mailbag. And lastly, we have to put a commuter down here. As you can see, that shows a gray, green, and yellow option with a question mark. So what happens is the current uh, player is going to reach into this bag, which has uh, five of each of those commuter types, and we can pull a random one out, and it looks like we found a gray one. So we can add that there, and the last thing that we have to do is draw those three tiles out and add them down face up in the middle of the table. All right, now it's time for us to take the first turn of the game, and all we have to do is draw one of the wooden tokens from this round card, or we could take one of these face-up tiles over here. Now, I think what we want to do is take this tile, but I do want to mention that whenever you take any tile or any token, instead of taking it as that tile or token, you can discard it and then take a single victory point from the supply. Um, that might not be a great action, but it is something that is available on every single player's turn. Now we have taken this one train track, and now we have to immediately add it down into our area. So let's focus in over here and place this tile. Now when it comes to legal placement spots, there are effectively three things to keep in mind. The first thing is that the new tile must be placed so that at least half of one of its sides is adjacent to a previously placed tile. The second thing to keep in mind is that you can never place a tile so that a train track runs into an edge of another tile that does not have a train track. So this would be illegal in both of these different spots because, of course, that does not run on into a train track. Train tracks can go onto nothing but not into a tile that does not match up. Now, the third restriction is you can never place a tile so that you create a loop with your track, which is obviously not something that we can do right now. Now, I think what we should do is place this right over there, which is going to extend this track. Obviously, we could have done a bunch of different things, like uh, that would have been legal or any of this stuff around the outside. But for now, I think extending this track is going to be good, and you'll see why shortly. Now that we've finished that single draft, play now moves clockwise to the next player. 
In this case, that is the green player, and they have decided they would like to pick up this mailbag right here. Now, they are going to immediately place this down, and they have to put it down onto one of their train lines, and they are going to put it down onto this train line right here. Now, it's worth noting that every piece of track can only have one of a specific type of token on it. Now, in this case, that is going to be the only male token they can put on this track. And now what's going to happen is at the end of the game, this line of track will score double points if it is enclosed. Now, at this point, we can bring out this nice cheat sheet right here, and it tells you how many points that uh, line of track will be if there is a station at each end. As you can see, there are two options for this. There is either the same station color on each end or two different station colors, and then the number of tiles that that track is on. So in this case, if they were to put a station right there to end it, that would be a one, two, three length track. And if that was a red station, then that would be two different colors. We could see that would be two or three tiles, which means that would be worth four points times two for this mailbag. So this is probably going to be a minimum of two extra points. But now that they put this down here, they are likely going to try and make a big long line of eight or more tiles to try and get as many points as they can, probably trying to have two different types of stations to get a maximum of 10 points out of that mailbag once the game is over. Now that green is done, the blue player can go, and they have decided to draft this tile right here. Next up, they have to add this down into their area, and they've decided to put it right over here. Well, now that the blue player is done, it's time for us to go, but before we take our draft action, I'd now like to point out this pile of money token right over here on our playing area. As you can see, the starting tile that we began with had that icon, and whenever you add one of these tiles down with that icon, you put a money token down on top of it. Now, on a player's turn, during their turn, they can spend up to three of these money tokens, and with each one of those uh, tokens, they can do a single money bonus action. Now, the first of these bonus action options lets us draw and add one of these bonus tiles from the top of the board. As you can see, there are 10 of these bonus tiles, and every time you play the game, you will have all 10 of these face up at the start. So before we draft anything, we could spend that money token to pick up one of these, or instead, we could do one of the other two money bag options. Now, uh, one of those involves these objective cards, and at the start of the game, we all received one of these. Now, we need to keep it face down so our opponents don't know what it is, so obviously we don't know what this is for the green player. And for ours, this says at the end of the game, if we have one of each of the three types of commuters on two of our tracks, then we will get five victory points. Now, let's say we are not doing a very good job of approaching this objective. Well, then we can spend one of our money tokens to draw the top objective card from this deck and then either use that one or stick with the previous objective card that we have. So that means we could use this to kind of mix up our options for this end game objective scoring. Now, there's one more thing you can do with a money token, and that involves these commuters. Now, when you take these commuters, you add them down onto a train line, and when you do that, you can spend one of your money tokens to act as if that commuter was one of the other two colors. So we could get rid of this and take this and say, this is going to score as if it was green, and I'll explain scoring these commuters very soon. Now, I think what we should do is spend this money token and add one of those bonus tiles before we take our main action. Now, obviously, we have 10 options to choose from, and I think let's take this one here. Next up, we have to add this down into our area, and I think we'll just put it right over here to make this line of tracks even longer. Now that we've done our money bonus action, it's time to do our main action, and I think let's take this gray commuter. Now, whenever you take any of these tokens, you have to add them down onto one of the tracks, and remember that each track cannot have more than one of each token type. So we can put this gray commuter down over onto this track, and in the future, we could put a yellow or green commuter onto the same track, but not another gray one. Now, once you add a commuter down, you then count the number of matching districts that that track runs through. Now, the gray commuters are looking at these kind of building gray districts over here, and as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five of them on this length of track at the moment we put this commuter down. That means we will now get five victory points. We can grab those from the supply and put them face up right over here. And it's worth noting that the number of victory points that you have is never hidden. So if any opponents are curious about how many points you have, you must tell them how much you have.
Now, when it comes to scoring these commuters, I would like to point out that the train stations themselves sometimes have a district behind them. This train station has a green district there. And I would also like to point out that there are districts that are essentially wild, having each color present. Unfortunately, we did not have any of those showing, but obviously this district would score for a gray, green, and yellow commuter going down onto that specific train line. All right, that has finished out our turn, so now the green player could go, and much like us, they would like to start by spending one of their money tokens. With this, they can obviously do one of the three different money actions I just talked about, and just like us, they've decided to take one of these bonus tiles. After thinking about it, they want to grab this tile, and they've decided to add this down right over here. After that's placed, they have to take their main action, and they're going to take this tourist right here. Now, whenever you take any of these tokens, you have to put it down onto one track, and they are going to put the tourist down onto this track right over here, because at the moment, they did not have any tourists already. Now, this means, again, in the future, they cannot add another tourist to this piece of track. Now, whenever you add a tourist down, you will then count the number of points of attractions that are orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to that line of track. So as you can see on this track, there is a one here with that stadium. There's a one over there for that stadium. There's a third stadium here. And then there is a carnival there, which has a two. So that means this tourist sees one, two, three, four, five worth of these attractions. So that is going to generate five victory points for the green player. So they can take that from the supply, just like we did on our turn. Now that green is done with their turn, the blue player can go. And they could take either this train or this tile. Now they've decided to grab the tile and they've decided to add this right over here. Now that is going to complete this piece of track. And remember at the end of the game, if you have at least two tiles, then you will get points. And as you can see, they have two different colored stations, which means that is going to be worth four points to them at the end of the game. If they put a mailbag there, that would be worth an additional four points to them. So at this point, they still have one, two, three overall tracks that they can extend. And this one will not get longer. All right, the blue player is done, so you would normally expect us to take another turn, but if at the end of any player's turn there is just one type of item up here, then that is going to end the round. As you can see, there is one train and nothing else, so that is the one item left, so that means the round now ends, and we will return this token and this card to the box. Now, I will describe how trains work once we cover end game scoring, which will happen pretty soon. Next up, we can check to see if the game is over. Now, that would happen if there were no cards left over here to draw from, but obviously there are eight cards, which means there are eight more rounds to play. So in this case, we can now pass the bag of commuters to the next player in a clockwise pattern, which means that they will be the starting player going into the next round. At this point, it's time for the preparation phase of the second round of the game, where we draw the top card and then populate it and draw some tiles. Now, I think I'm going to save that for the extended playthrough and now discuss what happens after the final round of the game. Well, the first thing we do after the final round of the game is we look up here to this end game bonus card. Now, at this point, each player is going to count up all of their victory points, and the player who has the least number of points can take one of these tokens. After they have taken that, you then move on to the next player in a victory point total until all players have taken one of these tokens. Now, we can see that one is a mailbag, which we already understand, and one is a train, which I will describe very soon, but then we have these other two tokens up here. Now, this one is a railway inspector, and this acts as if it was one computer of any color. So you can put this down onto a track that might already have yellow, green, and gray commuters on it, and then score one of those colors right in that moment. Now, this other one right here is a trailhead, and you can add this down onto the board to end any one of your train tracks, but it's worth noting you cannot add this down on top of a previously placed tile. It has to go next to a tile onto a spot that was already open. Once all players have had a chance to take a token from this card, we will then move into final scoring. In order to do this, we can look down at this cheat card right here, and the first thing that we will get points for are all of our finished train lines. Now, I've already described how this works, including the mailbag doubling those scores, so then the next thing we will score are trains. Now, up to this point, I haven't described the train action just yet, and whenever you take a train, you simply put it down onto one of your lines that does not have a train on it just yet, and then that train will score once the game is over. Now, as you can see over here, it says that there is a money column and a victory point column. Now, what you will do is you add up the number of money tokens that you have still out in your area that are adjacent to one of your trains. 
Then you look over here, and if you have 0 to 1 of those money tokens, you get 0 points. If you have 2 to 3 of those tokens next to the train, you get 4 points. And lastly, if you have 4 or more uh, leftover money tokens next to a train on a track, you get 10 victory points. Finally, we can look over here, and each player is going to count up their longest single track, and that track does not have to have stations on both of its ends. Now, you will count up the number of tiles, and the player with the longest track will get 6 points, then the second longest will get 3, then 1 and 0 points, and this is slightly different in a 3-player game. Uh, in the 3-player game, the 1 point is not scored, and in a 2-player game, the player with the longest track gets 6 points, and the other player gets 0. Well, at this point, I have covered just about all of the rules, so that means this tutorial is coming to a close. Now, if you'd like to watch the rest of the game, you can do so by clicking the link to the extended playthrough that's down below in the description, or you can click the eye up there in the top corner, and I hope you've enjoyed learning how to play Traintopia. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you can do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.